it's Austin, and I want to talk about more clones. Today's victim is none other than the Dragon Ball Z ripoff himself, Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic is 25. Pretty soon he'll be needing to regularly visit a proctologist, but for now, our boy is still able to run at a good pace. I mean, being real, sometimes Sonic's just fucking awful. But for this, we're going to focus on the classic 2D games. It tickles me to hear that some people think that Sonic has always been bad. It's as if the Nintendo vs Sega console wars have lasted two extra decades. But yeah, classic Sonic is the bomb. Get good. So let's talk about some clones, but with a catch. There aren't many games that directly mimic Sonic's approach to gameplay, so we're going to expand the definition of what a clone is. Just for this video, don't judge me. So there's two major things I'm looking for. A, a 2D side-scrolling platformer with an emphasis on speed. Basically, these are games that clearly lift elements from the Sonic games. And B, an anthropomorphic mascot that is so fucking clearly ripping on Sonic the Hedgehog because everyone lacked imagination. But these games are as close as it gets. And with that all out of the way, let's dive straight into the shit stream by revisiting one of the very first games that I ever talked about, High Seas Havoc. There are few games that come to mind when I think of a direct ripoff, visually speaking. I mean, yeah, a lot of first-person shooters look similar, but I'm talking like everything. Games like Golden Axe Warrior to Zelda and Fighter's History to Street Fighter. But one of, if not the biggest ripoff that comes to mind is High Seas Havoc. Captain Lang or Captain Havoc, whatever. See these characters? No, that's not Sonic and Amy, that's Havoc, Emerelda, and their shitty little baby. Don't forget about the discount Chaos Emerald, and boom, you got yourself a Sonic clone. I guess all you need is a bandana, and suddenly you got an OC. Damn you, Data East, you tricked me when I was like five, and I'll never forget- Oh, actually the game's pretty good. <laughs> Man, I have a lot of memories attached to this shit. High Seas Havoc was one of my earlier gaming memories, and for a really stupid reason. I thought it was a new Sonic game. How could you not? All of the colors here are super vivid. The controls were tight, and the soundtrack was top notch. In fact, when I was a babby boy, I picked this over Sonic 3 at the game store because I wanted to experience Sonic's pirate adventure. Needless to say, I was incredibly stupid. But while it might be a bit of a blatant rip on the visual style of Sonic, it's actually a solid platformer, for the most part. The level design and controls feel tight as hell, even if it's slower paced in general. Each zone is vastly different from the others, and with the exception of the first two, is divided into two levels and a boss. You know, like <laughs> Sonic! Instead of collecting rings, you'll find gems strewn about the level in the environment and chests. But instead of acting as a health meter, these act more similarly to the coins from the Mario games. Every 100 will give you a 1-up, and listen to this satisfying little jingle that plays every time you pick one up. Yeah, that's a, that's a good sound, um... Uh... For health, you gotta eat chicken you find on the corpses of enemies and uh, other places to recover your HP. Every stage in the game is extremely memorable, and that's only further exemplified by the amazing soundtrack. Havoc can hurt enemies by stomping on people's faces or doing a kickflip, and it just feels so good! But there's one big problem. High Seas Havoc is one of the hardest games I've ever played. And I'm not saying this based on unfairness in RNG. I'm saying that Havoc takes the concept of trial and error and pumps it up another level. Somewhere around the third level or so, when you run into Rystar's long lost fireball brother, the game starts throwing a plethora of bullshit at you. Jumps get harder and tighter, enemies do more damage, bosses have hard patterns to memorize. The challenge is good, right? But the ramp never stops. The incline gets steeper. Like, look at these angles. Ants! I'm traveling on ants, and anytime I jump, I'm just clinching! Thankfully, we have unlimited continues, but oh my god, you're gonna be hearing the death jingle a lot. <laughs> Havoc isn't a bad game by any means, and you should check it out, but be warned, you're not gonna win. I, I can't get past the last two stages, I, I, I just can't. Alrighty, this is exciting, guys! Let's take a look and see what else the magical world of clones has to offer us. Where's his dick? No, no, where is it? I'm not gonna let this slide, no! Mohawk and Headphone Jack is a big piece of garbage made for the Super Nintendo by Black Pearl Software who were like, let's make a game entirely out of mode seven. 
you can't tell, this game is nauseating and also completely terrible. You move fast and stuff, and even can do what is essentially Sonic's spin dash as an attack, but good fucking god, I can't tell what's happening! Apparently, you're supposed to just go from point A to B in each level, but well, look at this! When you throw in gravity and make each level stupidly massive, I, I just don't know what to do! With hyper-fast movement, the level's constantly shifting and controls looser than PSN security, we've got one ultra janky piece of shit. But Mohawk and Headphone Jack surely exists, and that's more than Mega Man Legends 3 ever got, so yeah. Where that dick though? So next up is a little game called Socket. Not Sonic, Socket. It's different, I swear. I swear. Socket, also known as Time Dominator First in Japan, is a platform game developed and published by Vic Tokai for the Mega Drive slash Genesis and released on August 17th, 1993. That's the entire Wikipedia article for the game, y'all. That's it. So in terms of being a Sonic clone, Socket is pretty much as close as it gets. I don't know if he's a duck or an eagle Sonic, I'm not sure, but more importantly, he's also a robot who was sent back to the past to kick ass. And you do that by, well, Kicking the living shit out of everything. Why jump when you can roundhouse your enemies into dust? Instead of collecting rings, you collect electricity. And this actually plays directly into the game as it recharges your energy meter. Being a robot and all, Socket needs to plug into electric gas stations and refuel at the beginning and end of every stage. This is actually pretty adorable and shows that a lot of thought was put into building the world here. So as you're zipping through stages at Mach 56 or whatever, you pick up these things. No. Listen to the best sound effect of all time. I wouldn't have done that. As you can tell from the level design, Socket closely teeters that hedgehog line the whole way through, even so far as to have similar aesthetics in the special stages. Things are bright and neon colored. While it plays differently, it's easy to tell how much Socket borrowed. Each zone is split into three sections. There's the opening stage, where you're traveling back in time, essentially. These are super speed-based, coming close to auto-scrollers at times. Then you get to a year where you have to fight the Time Dominator, and each zone is vastly different. Maybe you're in an ancient underwater ruin, or perhaps prehistoric times, fighting inside a dinosaur's mouth. Then, at the end of each stage is a boss fight, all relatively different despite fighting the same baddie. The ripoff ometer is sliding firmly into the blatant zone at this point. I mean, it's so obvious. Fast to slow platforming, bounce pads, fucking this. Hmm? Hmm? One thing that I've always thought was good to lift from Sonic was the concept of good music. And just like High Seas Havoc, Socket fucking kills it! It lands somewhere in between Sonic and the Mega Man X games and feels right at home on the Genesis hardware. Take a listen. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the sound effects. <sighs> oh god. Remember when you're playing a Sonic game and you're underwater and the breath jingle starts to play? You feel the tension building and building until the inevitable... Death. Well, Socket also has a little jingle for when you're running low on energy. <laughs> Check it out. Yeah, this is fine. Overall, Socket's a pretty cool game. I mean, it's really fucking easy, but there's definitely some merit here. And once you defeat the Time Dominator, once and for all, Socket is thrown back into Cairo Stasis, which is kind of sad, actually. Who are these people next to him? Were they perhaps abandoned sequels, considering the name of the game was Time Dominator first? Probably, and that sucks. Fare thee well, Socket. May you rest in Cairo Stasis as a hidden gem on the Genesis. May the inconsistency between the Western and Japanese boxes forever make me unable to determine what animal exactly you were supposed to be. So while we're going through all of the strange anthropomorphic mascots from the 90s, let us not forget about the most important and influential one. <laughs> you know exactly who I'm talking about. It's Awesome Possum kicks Dr. Machino's butt. Duh. Fucking duh. That's right, it's everyone's favorite possum. Awesome. Is that really his name? What do you know, another Genesis game. It seems to be a running trend so far for these little furry mascots to inhabit the Genesis, which was Sonic's home turf. But you see, Awesome Possum is a little different. Not only because it's a Sonic clone, but also an educational game. 
That's right, Awesome Possum is one of them environmental activists. He's here to recycle, educate the children, save the world, and well, kick Dr. Machino's butt. During this era of animal mascots being edgy and shit, Awesome Possum stood up and yelled quite literally on the box, I'm gonna clean up this world yet. After all, it's cool as fuck to clean up the environment. In between levels, you get asked questions in an attempt to educate children. Questions about the planet, space, animals, and recycling. It's all positive. Answer them correctly to increase that score. It's an interesting diversion to the gameplay. But get it wrong, and everyone you know and love will be disappointed in you, wishing for you to have a slow and painful death. Good message aside, there's a few neat things about this game. There's actually an insane amount of digitized speech here. That's super rare, especially with it being on the Genesis. From the title theme to the little things Awesome spouts out during the level. And that's all the nice things that I have to say. Now for the negatives. There's actually an insane amount of digitized speech here. Bad guy, oh my whale is ah! I'm awesome. Shut the fuck up for one second. I haven't altered the frame rate or anything, this game just legitimately runs like ass. It tries to have a sense of speed, but when the screen is just fucking jerking around, it's pretty hard to tell what's going on. Even when you activate speedrun strats, it's just like, okay, what's happening? Huh. Not to mention, when you get to boss fights, you fucking fly around the screen after hitting an enemy, making it hard to see where you're gonna end up. And you die so quickly, so it's like, gah, just stop moving! The only real thing of note here is that Mr. Lawrence, aka the guy who worked on Rocco's Modern Life and SpongeBob, also voicing Plankton, provided voices. Which voice? No one knows, but still, it's pretty neat. Awesome Possum's kinda like that really annoying stereotypical vegan friend that everyone has. I mean, yeah, preaching about the environment is a good thing, but at a certain point it's like, go away. Anytime you pick up a health kit, he excitedly exclaims, I'm so healthy, I'm so healthy, I'm so healthy, and it's sure to drive people insane. Sure enough to the title of the game, when you reach the final stage, which takes fucking dedication, man, sure enough, you literally kick Dr. Machino's butt. And then it ends, but not before proclaiming that because of his good deeds, Awesome Possum got his head added to Mount Rushmore. Of all the fucking goddamn hypocritical things to end the game on, they had to do it with a method that literally destroys the earth! Hey, awesome. Fuck recycling. But just because a game is a clone doesn't make it bad. Not by a long shot. Back in the olden days of early PC gaming and shareware, you'd find all kinds of weird stuff floating around. I'm sure most of you know Epic Games, way before Gears of War, and even Unreal was a little gem called Jazz Jackrabbit. Young developers Ariane Bruce and Baby Cliffy B tossed up together what was essentially a game that would not break through to the mainstream, but get itself a nice cult following. After all, platforming games weren't too common on the PC, especially with the rise of first-person shooters at the time with, you know, Doom. But Jazz Jackrabbit is pretty cool. You can tell that they lifted a lot from Sonic here. What with the invulnerability items and <laughs> this? Even the running animation looks similar to Sonic. Well, old Sonic, not Naruto run Sonic. Jazz is fucking hard, and I think that has a lot to do with how low the resolution is. With how rapidly you move from side to side, it's super easy to get discombobulated. But since you have access to different types of guns, you can mash that blast button and hope to god you get rid of obstacles. Thankfully there's no bottomless pits here, but getting hit by an enemy sends you flying back so hard you'll probably fall into more shit. So basically, it's a little rough. I mean, it's neat being able to run super quickly without having to stop much, and the life system can be generous. Bosses aren't anything too special, so a majority of the difficulty is going to be trial and erroring your way through hordes of bullshit. Or if you're lucky, you can find a fucking hoverboard and zoom through entire levels while unloading on everything in sight. It's muy bueno. Weapon varieties provide different methods to the madness, and overall it's, well, pretty decent. With the exception of the bonus levels. They are pretty much ripped straight from Sonic CD, and oh boy, they're really annoying. A lot of the issues were fixed in the sequel, Jazz Jackrabbit 2, when the idea took on its own unique identity, pushing itself further away from being a Sonic clone. You could see the fucking screen now, but well, Maybe a bit too much in the screen. You're so tiny! Wasn't too big on the aesthetic here with the big gross looking rabbits, Jazz and Spaz, but what can you do? All I know is that for being released in 1994, Jazz Jackrabbit feels infinitely better than that goddamn Akira game on the there was going to be a third game that was going to be set in full 3D, but unfortunately that got cancelled. And that sucks because it looked pretty neat. Overall, Jazz Jackrabbit, I might play it again. 
All right, everybody, there's one last game to talk about, and it's a doozy. It has to be easily my most requested game. Hey, I was, hey, I was wondering, wondering if you could review Freedom Planet. Planet. Well, there well, is Freedom Planet. Nobody even noticed Freedom Planet. Freedom Planet. Freedom Planet. Ever considering looking at Freedom Planet? You should check out Freedom Planet. Okay, fine, fine, look. Freedom Planet, here it is. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's fucking do it. Freedom Planet is the newest game in this video coming out only two years ago. In fact, it was a Kickstarter project done by Galaxy Trail. Oh, and it's fucking great! Imagine, if you will, some of the absolute best 2D platformers you can smashed together with some fantastic music, stellar animation, clever level design, and boom! You got yourself one Freedom Planet ready to go. Still a Sonic clone, what with its not Chaos Emerald, but that's not a bad thing. So, getting started, we're thrown into space, where we see some shit go down. This is Brevin. He's not a very nice person. He's coming to Planet Avalis to steal the energy from the Kingdom Stone, and it's up to you to stop him. I feel like this was a missed opportunity to call the planet Freedom. I don't know, maybe it's just me. So you have a choice to play as Lilac the Dragon Girl or Carol the Wildcat, and then eventually Mila the Dog, but not right off the bat. And just like other classic Sonic games, each one of these characters controls completely different from the others. As you can tell, the game does mimic Sonic in terms of its approach to traversal on terrain, but also incorporates elements from other games. Lilac is essentially Sparkster Sonic, and has an awesome charge boost ability that allows her to bounce off walls. Carol is Mega Man Knuckles Sonic, has a focus on wall jumping and melee attacks. And Mila is, well, who the fuck knows, but it's pretty unique. You could throw jelly at motherfuckers. That's Piku, I guess. Now, unlike the Sonic games, Freedom Planet has a much greater emphasis on combat, and each character has a completely different approach to it, making each playthrough unique. Add on top of that character-specific levels, including some that have puzzle-solving elements that mimic the Metroidvania style of games. Basically, you got yourself a pretty damn beefy game for a Sonic clone. The only real problems are elements of the story. Despite being extremely stylized and bright, the narrative is pretty generic. And oh god, some of the voice acting is just painful. What do you think you're doing? That's the Kingdom Stone! So? I needed to find my father's killer. Not like a couple traitors like yourselves would care. Ah, <sighs> uh, uh, it's, it's not great. Mm -mm. A lot of the time, audio levels aren't even mixed properly, and a couple voice actors have their lines clipped. I realized that this was an effort made possible by Kickstarter, so I'm willing to be a little lenient, but it makes progressing through the story a bit awkward. Because of gaps in the story, it's also easy to get lost in what exactly is going on. Why are we fighting anyway? For my friends. Thankfully, there's a method to play without the dialogue if you want that old school platforming feeling. And you want to play through the game several times because, well, it's fun, and it's pretty fucking hard. The stages themselves are a lot of fun and give plenty of leeway for learning, but man, some of these bosses are like, whoa, they'll kick your ass, and it's awesome. Thankfully, the continue system is pretty forgiving and won't throw you back too far, but man, it's super satisfying to clear through one of many, many boss fights in the game. I mean, look at this big ass dragon. What? There's also references strewn about all over the place, including a boss fight that is essentially Seven Force from Gunstar Heroes, which is A-OK -okay with me. And continuing what seems to be a trend with most of the games in this video, Freedom Planet's soundtrack is just... Uh, it's pretty funny to me that Freedom Planet just comes out of nowhere and it's just like, Hey, I'm Freedom Planet, the best Sonic game in 22 years, what's up? And with games like Generations, that's saying something. Games like this give me hope for the upcoming Sonic Mania, and don't even get me started on Freedom Planet 2. I need that shit. You can pick up Freedom Planet on Wii U or Steam, and I highly suggest you do so. You can tell that so much love and care was thrown into this game, and you'd best support the developers for making what is essentially a love letter to the 16-bit generation of video games. And thusly, ends the legacy of Austin. It was speculated that shortly after the video in question was shown to the world, that he was buried alive by angry comments, such as ones calling him a f***ing cunt and a f***ing persona loving f egotistical f boy. However, in his will was one request, to be placed amongst the greats at Mount Rushmore with his fat stacks of YouTube money. Ride on, young Boku. Ride on. Green streak speeds by, Austin the Hedgehog moves fast, only some of the time, Austin the Hedgehog, Austin, he likes what we can do, Austin, he's got a what we do, Austin, he's the fastest thing in life, oh can I really, but he's a guy, he's green and he's alive, <sighs> fuck Austin.
person. <laughs> Holy crap, thanks for watching. We hit 50,000 subscribers and I'm just fucking, I'm ecstatic. I can't believe it. Special thanks to Mitch from Heavy Eyed for doing the voiceover. Check out his channel below. Also, Hannah Dokin for doing the Austin the Hedgehog drawing. And make sure to subscribe, do all those things, and I will see you guys next time.